The Taliban in Afghanistan have appealed for international support after an earthquake killed at least 1,000 people and injured another 1,500. Both of those numbers are likely to rise over the coming days. The earthquake struck the Paktika province, which is on the border with Pakistan, about 30 miles from the city of Khost. It happened in the early hours of Wednesday morning local time. Afghanistan is particularly vulnerable to earthquakes because of the geological fault lines which cross the country. The quake measured 6.1 in magnitude, damaging thousands of homes in one of the world's poorest countries. Francis Reed has the latest. Cracks in the walls of what used to be a home. Whole villages in this part of the country now gone. This a major disaster. Of those who've survived, many are now homeless. Searchers continue in the rubble, but overnight heavy rain and hail has hampered the rescue. The air ambulance arrives in a remote area, but the response is limited. It's one of only a handful of helicopters left in the country since the Taliban returned to power. The hospital beds in Paktika's capital, Sharan, are full of both the very youngest and the older. Bibi survived, but she lost 19 family members and fears she's now completely alone. Seven in one room, five in the other, four in another, then three in another have all been killed in my family. I can't talk anymore. My heart is getting weak, she says. Here, the injured are treated, but doctors say they're worried about food and supplies in the coming days, as well as waterborne diseases. The UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, said it's fully mobilised, with teams on the ground to provide initial support. But it's not yet clear what form that will take long term. The country, one of the poorest in the world, was already facing a humanitarian crisis with millions vulnerable to famine. The ruling Taliban, still international pariahs, and Afghanistan's economy crushed by sanctions. We call on the international community to help because our country alone cannot handle this incident. We want the international community to start working with us at this time and to continue their cooperation. As emergency food and medical supplies leave for remote areas, aid agencies fear this disaster may be worse than already seen. A lack of communication means it's hard to know the extent of help needed or the damage caused. They can only hope that help comes fast enough. Francis Reed, BBC News. Well, let's talk to Asunta Charles, who's national director of the aid agency World Vision Afghanistan, currently in London. Asunta Charles, uh, this disaster coming on top of already desperate situation in Afghanistan. Yes, it's a frustrating situation for me to see already the drought has affected the people. People are dying on the ground without food and health facilities and without proper water fa facilities. And adding to that, this earthquake has really become a major disaster for the country. It's really, really a frustrating situation, honestly. Now, your organization doesn't work, I believe, in the area that's been hit by the earthquake. But what information are you getting about what the situation is like there? I have been hearing from the ground that going to the area is becoming highly difficult. As we know, these are remotest areas and the transport has always been a problem. So people have to walk, walk the roads to reach these places. And this is going to really become a bigger challenge in saving lives. So people may be under the rubbles and uh, saving them is going to be a major task. And already health facilities have failed in Afghanistan. There are no proper medicines, no doctors. So saving these wounded is going to be a bigger challenge for us. And I mean, as you as you outline, even before the Taliban takeover, Afghanistan's emergency services were very, very stretched to deal with natural disasters. Uh, what do you see as being the solution to coming to the aid of people affected by this? Uh, for me, this disaster rings a stronger bell to the global community. So again, Afghanistan cannot be forgotten. This is what I want to say, and this country needs everyone's support. 
and it should go beyond the humanitarian intervention and say a more of livelihood options for people, disaster risk management, so that such disasters can be avoided and lives can be saved. So this rings a bell to say much more attention is needed. Conflicts are everywhere, but Afghanistan is special and it needs to be supported so that people can live. Are you talking on about uh, international co uh, countries in particular uh, coming to the aid, giving financial donations to the Taliban to try to help people in this region? No, based on the UN sanctions, there was already an exception made for the humanitarian aid. We are saving lives. So we have to find such mechanisms to continue to support this country. So it's not like approving the de facto authorities, but these are living, these are human beings. These are not just numbers. So I'm looking at the people on the ground, children on the ground who are dying. So it's the international community, the global community to find a creative mechanism to reach out to these people right. without so, crossing any red lines. Right. So just to go back to something you said then, Asunta Charles, that there is already an exception made for humanitarian causes uh, that doesn't fall foul of the current sanctions in place against the Taliban regime. Yeah, we are making sure that no aid diversion happens. We have our own red lines to follow. So this is how the global community has to see that people there need support. So we have to develop a mechanism without crossing the red lines. We can support the, support the people on the ground. Asenta Charles, National Director in Afghanistan for World Vision, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you so much.